The impact of the new tax regime on prices was immediate and exponential. An outcry ensued. Authorities have bowed to the pressure. Government had introduced a levy to boost waning revenue to meet its bulging overheads. But analysts argue trying to extract any further tax from an already overburdened population, the majority of whom are not formally employed, is simply unsustainable. With the tax now shelved, what next for the financially stretched government? A way forward would be uh, for government to now engage stakeholders and to look for alternative sources of revenue to replace the revenue that was going to be raised by the VAT. It was going to be quite, quite some substantial amount, but we believe uh, we need to introduce things like import taxes and other taxes on luxury items as opposed to basic commodities. MPs who vociferously oppose the VAT say additional taxes will provide short-term relief. They blame some policies for scaring away capital that could have unlocked the revenue flows government is desperate for. If you put in place an indigenization policy like the one that our government has put in place, what you are simply telling the world is that we don't want money, we don't want to get tax, we don't want uh, revenue streams. Because you're not going to get adequate revenue from taxing people that are not employed. You get revenue from um, foreign direct investment. They say the impact of any extra revenue will be partial as long as government expenditure remains at current levels. More than 90% of income goes towards wages. A bill government has been battling to fund, regularly postponing pay dates. It's currently at a stalemate with public servants over 2016 bonuses, which it's proposing to pay in residential stands. Even if you pay them with land, you pay them with stands, which can be feasible in the immediate, then what happens after three or four, five months? We need a long-term solution. And I think a long-term solution would be now to engage the international organizations, our development partners, would then help us. And we know what needs to be done to trim the size of the civil service. Under IMF supervised reforms, Zimbabwe has committed to cut its wage bill by a third by 2019. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe.